How y'all doing? How's it going, Darius? Uh, the interception on Saturday, it seems like that's kind of been a, been a string of those where it's either the first uh, defensive possession of the game or you're just making the big play when you need to. Just how would you describe your mentality, you know, on some of the, especially for the first possession of a game? I would say mentality-wise, Coach Beamer emphasized it. Um, Kentucky, we haven't forced, uh, forced any fumbles. First play, get a fumble. Uh, emphasize those guys haven't thrown many interceptions all season. Uh, and we get one on the first series, so – I'll say mentality-wise, it's all about just going out there and just making plays. Uh, you want, you want to be that guy that just goes out there and just be a momentum changer, and that's what that was, and it led to a touchdown on the next draft for the offense. Darius, just how would you kind of evaluate the season you're having and how you fit into what's been kind of a banged-up secondary? Uh, the season that we're having, I mean, just, just going week by week, honestly. Uh, with our record, it shows. Uh, positive, positive record. So I mean, we're doing good things. Uh, secondary wise, I mean, it's a part of the game. Going to have injuries. Going to have people that get banged up. So, but it's always a next man up mentality. Whether that's like in this emphasis, when RJ went down at the beginning of the season, we had a had to start Nick, a f true freshman. It's always a next man up mentality. So I'll say with the uh, with the bang up secondary, um, the guys that we're developing now. Uh, it's, we're, we're not worried about anything because we know those guys are going to do what they can to help this team the best they can. Hey, Darius. Um, with the amount of injuries that you guys have had, I know you've rotated through a lot of guys at Vanderbilt. Just kind of what kind of a challenge is it to have so many different, you know, guys in the secondary rotating through during a single game like that? I would say uh, in a game like that, uh, it starts to get crunch time. You got some guys that just uh, – Got to step up. It's like uh, OD, for instance, he hasn't taken uh, many reps, but come in, get a get a strip, strip fumble, um, and then get an interception to seal the game. So it's just the the game games like that where you do have these injuries. You just got to have your guys um, that you're developing throughout the season, and they come in and make plays like that. It's all about preparation. So for him to just come out there and did what he did to help us win that game, it was more of a from a preparation standpoint. And like I said, just a next man up mentality when Cam goes down and he has to come in and play. So, Thinking back to last year's Vanderbilt game and the leading up to this year's game, how for you individually, how much did you want to kind of atone for, for the way things went last year? <laughs> I was waiting on this one. Uh, <laughs> I'll say it was, uh, it was like a person. It was personal. Um, last year, I'll, I was like one of my worst games I – I, I say to myself, like, that was a game I had circled. I was like, all right, uh, this is a this is like a revenge tour, man. I got to get this game back. Um, but, but personally, that was for me just to go out there and have a better performance than I did last year. But the main goal was to get a win for the team, and that's what we did. So, still rolling, what, 14 years straight now? So, how how and I guess for for this week coming up, and I know you guys take it one one week at a time, but how? How excited are you to start this week and, and looking ahead to the next three games that are left on the schedule as well? Taking it. Uh, so, Florida, good team. Um, had a, We beat them last year, but each each week is a new week. Each season is a new season. So, uh, they're a good team. They're they're trying to get bowl eligible now. They uh, they are, I think they're sitting at five wins. Uh, so, going in there, they got the mentality of trying to get to that six win for those guys. But... Uh, we just can't go in there expecting to just beat them. We have to go out, go out there and just act, and we have to play. Uh, a great quarterback, similar to Arkansas's quarterback. He wants to, he can run the ball. Big physical guy, so that'll be um, something that we have to worry about those guys. And then they their passing game. They got good receivers and they want to throw the ball deep and they also want to run it. So I'll say for the most part, uh, this week we just got to go out there and just compete. Yeah, I was going to ask about the, the same thing that uh, Hale just asked. Have you seen a lot of film of Florida so far and of Richardson, and what specifically can make you know makes Richardson such a such a special weapon for them? A uh, weapon for them, it'll be his uh, it'll be his feet. He's a he's a guy that can throw the ball, and that's one thing you got to worry about with him. But also running the ball, uh, he can when anything breaks down and gets out the pocket, he wants to run it. So I'll say eliminating that that uh, run game for him, keeping him contained is something um, that'll help us, and also just stopping the run. 
um, and eliminating spoke, uh, explosive plays are, will be our key to this game right here. You talked about how much that Vandy win meant to you, but for the team as well, locking up that bowl eligibility, have you found it made breakfast take, taste a little sweeter coming into this week? Oh, it definitely tastes sweeter, man. Um, but, I mean, we're not we're not satisfied with just getting bowl eligible. We still got three games, and we want to win the uh, – take it week by week. So being bowl eligible is a great thing, but can't be satisfied with just six wins. Uh, so with these next three games, like I said, taking it week by week, we got Florida – Worrying about Florida to get this win, and then we'll worry about Tennessee and Clemson later. Darius, yeah, week by week. Have you ever heard any fans or anybody refer to this part of your schedule as the Orange Crush? I don't think I ever heard of it as the Orange Crush, but I can get where you're going with it. Yeah. <laughs> I, get, I can get where you're going with it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a lot of orange, you know, we don't like orange, but, <laughs> uh, but no, I never heard of the orange crush, but uh, now as you say it. What about, what about the opportunity, you know, week to week here, obviously, but you know, for you guys to distinguish yourselves against a tough road game and then two pretty good teams in theory. Uh, like coach said in our team meeting, they remember November. So what we do in November is what they remember about this South Carolina football team. So, like you said, with this Orange Crush deal, uh, going on the road to the swamp, uh, that's a, it's a very uh, hostile environment. But we can't let an environment change and dictate the way we play. So, uh, going down there, I mean, we just got to play South Carolina ball, and I know our fans are going to be there to, with us as well. So, um, that and then – after that, you come back home, uh, night game against Tennessee, great team, um, a very explosive team. And then after that, hostile environment uh, in Clemson. Uh, but other than that, taking it week by week and just got to go play to our potential and know the best we can play. Darius, obviously you've been on punt coverage with Kai, uh, I guess, most of this year. I guess what's that kind of been like, and what, what's he kind of brought to the table in his spot as well? I would say Kai, he's, he's, he's got an elite foot, man. Um, just being able to flip the, flip the field like he does and me doing my part to uh, help that. So with his punts and the way he can just put them inside the 10 and, um, and I can just go out there and help him and down it, it gives the defense an uh, opportunity to just go down and keep him down there and make them punt it. And with our return game, we got Josh Van back there, who's great at returning punts. Um, so we, he can get that uh, field position a little, just a little bit closer to the end zone for our offense to help them score. So with Kai having the foot that he has and me going down there and help, um, helping him, whether that's making a tackle or down the punts, it just helps both all three phases, uh, special teams, defense, and offense. You guys got a lot of quarterbacks on this roster, but where's, where's Kai fall in the, in the, in the pecking order? <laughs> yeah. Uh, He's perfect right now, man. So <laughs> he's uh, he's he's up there, but I'll say for the most part, Kyle, man, he's like a hundred percent. Hey, Darius, we saw things get kind of chippy on the field Saturday. I know Cam Smith was involved in one play. Did you see any of that? And what does that kind of do for you as a team when you're playing on the road and things are kind of get getting physical on the field? Same thing it was against Texas A&M. It's just emotion. Uh, a lot of emotion going uh, with that place uh, that Cam got involved in. I mean, it was it was more of a yeah, emotional thing for him. He got hit. He felt like it was uh, in a disrespectful way and handled it the way that he did. Uh, it, I wish he. I mean, we wish we could have got in there earlier to, to stop it. I mean, it happened, but it's all like it's just emotion. Um, high emotion throughout the games, and it just like I said about Texas A&M, it's just it's just guys com out there competing, whether it's emotion, protecting your teammates, but it all comes down to being disciplined, uh, being a disciplined football team. Uh, some of the penalties that we had, we could have uh, eliminated from a personal foul standpoint, and that's uh, one thing we do pride ourselves on is playing smart football. So. Those incidents and uh, back and forth that, that we usually get into, it's just uh, about being disciplined and keeping your composure. 
Hey, Darius, for the second straight week, there were a number of missed tackles. I know last week Coach Beamer said something about maybe hitting a little more in practice than normal. Uh, how is that being addressed this week? Uh, how's, uh, that's being addressed by basically going out there and taking our drills and being much more technical sound with those guys, uh, those drills. So whether that's keeping them, having a proper angle, uh, fitting up the right gaps, things like that. So tackling wise, I mean, you're gonna have missed tackles. A part of, it's a part of the game, uh, but missing too many like the way we did, it, it shows on the field with giving up uh, a lot of rushing yards. So how we emphasize emphasize it now, whether that's from strength guy to coach to player, we emphasize the like getting your chest on guys every chance you get, just to get that that feeling of okay, I'll make this in the game. So that's one, that's one thing that we're emphasizing this week, especially in practice, just fitting up guys and wrapping up um, so we can eliminate the missed tackles. Darius, a couple for you. You went to C.E. Murray in Greeleyville. Where are you from, Greeleyville or King Street? I'm from King Street. I went to school in Greeleyville. Yes, okay. Um, you know, you were coming out as kind of an athlete. You enrolled here as a receiver. Just uh, what did you, I guess, expect coming into college, uh, you know, after – playing a lot of positions in high school. Do you expect to stick at receiver? Did you know that moving to DB would be a possibility? Uh, honestly, no. I never uh, really thought about moving to DB. Uh, crazy crazy thing about that, when I first switched over, I called my brother and told him that that's what we're doing, um, switching to DB. First thing he tells me, oh, finally, man, I always wanted you to play DB. <laughs> But you always wanted to play receiver, so we just did receiver thing. <laughs> so my brother was for it being a DB, <laughs> uh, and it's and it's working out right now. Um, and at that point, that was just to help um, help the team, honestly. And I contribute on special teams as well. So at that uh, point, switching over and then embracing this role, it was just really to help out the team in the best way I can. And what's your brother's name? Did he play at all? Uh, no, sir. But he did attend. Uh, University of South Carolina, got his uh, undergrad here and got his uh, MBA at Stanford. Marcus Rush. Darius, who's uh, pretending to be Richardson on scout team this week? Who we got? So many quarterbacks. We got, we got like three of them <laughs> yeah, rotating back trying there. Trying to just mimic uh, everything. I mean, we got Omega Blake, who also uh, played quarterback, South Point. Um, we got uh, we got Tanner taking reps. It's it's more of a development purposes for those guys. We don't try to s specify. Oh, this guy's this guy of the week. Maybe at receiver we might do something like that, but it's for development purposes, mm -hmm. and that's what we uh, pride ourselves on. Whether it's scout team, it's just rotating quarterbacks, letting them get those kind of reps, just to, uh, develop them still. And when you guys were banged up in the secondary earlier in the season, Coach Beamer talked about some miscommunication on the back end. Where do you feel like that communication is now, especially with so many guys trying to rotate in and out? It, it, it's improving. Uh, it improves from week to week, whether it's uh, some miscommunication might be amongst me and a, and a freshman versus me and an older guy. At the end of the day, it was still miscommunication amongst – no matter whether a guy played three, four years versus a guy who just played this year. It's just uh, about knowing your assignments and knowing what to do in certain situations. So from us in a communication standpoint amongst me and uh, DQ and Nick, those freshman guys, it's, I understand like this is their first year really playing college. It's a lot more communication. So I have to take that amongst myself to help them out in the process. I can't uh, really put it on those guys to get the communication. It's a because it's a team defense. Everybody's communicating. Everybody's talking. Uh, so from a communication standpoint, we just that's what we emphasize in practice. As well, just talking because a talking secondary is a great secondary, and that's one thing I'll say we improved each week on was communicating a little bit more. Hey, Darius, you guys have won back-to-back -back games on the road. Um, and you kind of mentioned earlier, Swamp is a tough environment. How do you guys keep the momentum going? And then how do you guys um, stay in your own element and keep stay with the game plan? I'll say in that emphasis, it's, it's us versus us. I mean, uh, we treat t take it each week as a nameless, faceless opponent. I mean, no matter where you're playing, no matter what time, at the end of the day, a game still has to be played. 
So for us to just go in there and not beat ourselves, you you, st you stand a chance, whether that's from a penalty standpoint, st stopping the run, running the ball, creating explosive plays, winning a turnover battle, playing smart football and dominating like the fourth quarter. So if we go and do those things and not beat ourselves, it doesn't matter who you're playing. As long as you can just go in there and execute um, with great detail alignments and doing good on your assignments. Appreciate you guys.